Some people will say, we do LCA to describe the world, to get a better sense of the way the world works. That's what scientists do, to describe reality. And other people will say, that's insufficient. We must also inform, we must educate, we must publish, we must disseminate, we must communicate. And some people will say, that also is insufficient. Our communications must be influential. We must do more than inform decision makers. We must work towards a future world that we want to live in. So there's a tension between these three motivations for LCA, and yet they're complementary. They're only complementary if we understand the way they work together. And I think it would be helpful to think about a particular LCA or your role in this larger system of describe, inform, influence. There are these four themes that have come up several times. There are other themes as well, but these four, I think I have something to add to. They are decisions, ethics, ethics in the sense of collective values, systems and systems thinking, and communication decisions. I was thinking about how to organize an understanding of the way people make decisions. There are two axes that I think are important. Scale along the vertical axis. There's a difference between the way individuals make decisions, the way organizations make decisions, and the way decisions are made at the scale of a nation or a population. And the other one, I'm borrowing from Dan Kahneman, fast and slow. He recognized that there were different ways people make decisions. So there is the scale, the question of who and what collective, and there's the question of what sort of technique. This is my brainstorm on how different ways of decision making relate to scale and speed. Down in the lower left-hand corner, at the scale of the individual, Decisions are made really fast when they're a matter of habit or identity. Some of the people went through the lunch buffet and there were little placards that informed you about the gluten content and the vegetarian or the vegan content. And because people identify as a vegetarian, not just I'm avoiding plant foods today, they think of themselves in this identity state they select the foods, they make the decisions about what to eat, either as a form of habit or as a form of identity. And there is no spreadsheet required. Moving up from habit and identity, when we get to the organizational scale, we promulgate policies. Bureaucracies work on the basis of forms. I've learned this by teaching at a state university. I'm not saying I'm good at them. What I'm saying is we have to have rules, procedures, and policies to substitute for the judgment that would be required in more expensive decision-making processes. They're generally fast because the decisions have already been routed for us. But when the policies, procedures, rules, or norms fail, then we exercise judgment. Judgment isn't about knowing when to depart from the procedure, when to break the rule, and it's more complicated than following the rules. Moving on up, analysis appears. Analysis is a particular way of informing judgment. Life cycle assessment, as sang -Wan said, is sometimes called life cycle analysis. We have sped through identity, habit, policy, and judgment and inserted this tool of life cycle assessment up in analysis. And what I'm suggesting is it may be more effective for groups and organizations and the processes they use to promulgate policies and rules and procedures than at the scale of the individual, which is a scale that we want to reach, the consumer. Consumers may make their purchasing decisions in the lower left-hand corner, and yet here we have a tool that operates closer to the upper right, but analysis is only one and rare way of making decisions. It takes a long time, and it involves deliberation. It is rare that an analyst is making a decision without informing some broader deliberative process. So we have that up and to the right even further, and at the level of the planet or the nation, the decision-making is so complex that I hesitate to describe it. I've simply put a question mark behind the word culture. How does culture change? At what tempo does it change? And how does it trickle all the way back down to some kind of collective identity? I don't know. 
Neither do other people who are certified by ACLCA in life cycle assessment. When we think about why we do life cycle assessment, when it becomes to inform and influence, we need models of how the decisions we hope to influence are made so that we can understand how LCA inserts into the organization at what tempo and in what way it relates to this overall decision-making map. Ethics. We're thinking about ethics as a collective expression of values. These are the things that our group agrees that we care about, but there are two schools of thought about ethics. The philosophers say the end point is reasoning, is cognitive. It's an understanding of ethical implications. It's not the job of philosophy to tell people what to do. But when we're talking about professional ethics, engineering ethics, or the ethical standards of the American Center for Life Cycle Assessment, we teach, or we inform, or we expect behavioral outcomes. We expect people to conduct themselves in accordance with our shared values, not just think about the values. And so it behooves us to understand how behavior in regard to ethics and morals develops. This is another model of what's called a cognitive theory of moral development. And it says there are four stages leading up to a particular ethical or moral action. The first is awareness. If we're not aware of an ethical issue, if we're not aware of a conflict between reality or our behavior and our values, then we're not gonna be taking any actions. The second is judgment. And judgment here is the ability to formulate alternatives to the status quo and rank order them according to our preference. We wanna live in this kind of world more than we wanna live in that world or that world. LCA is good at awareness Hey, here's a problem. When you expand your system's boundaries, you discover unintended consequences. Now you are aware. It activates this chain of moral development. It's also good with judgment, although it's important to go all the way through impact assessment if you're gonna fully inform the judgment. And here the subjective characteristics come in, whether it's weighting or normalization, to rank order alternatives, LCA must apply values. Here, we can inform judgment, but we're still working just with understanding, not with behavior. After judgment comes motivation. Just because we understand something doesn't mean we give a crap. Up to judgment, we're talking about our cognitive understanding, but when we get to motivation, we're engaging the affective part of our minds, the ones where feelings reside, the things that we care about we may decide to act on. But typically, when it is a moral or an ethical action, and it's essential that life cycle analysts think about this kind of thing, because all of LCA is motivated by trying to understand the consequences that we have, that our products have, that our processes have on others. Those external things that otherwise would be hidden from us, there's no point to LCA if it isn't in this moral sensibility about what is the influence we have on the world and other people besides ourselves. It is often an act of courage. Motivation alone is insufficient to result in action. Even when the motivation is tied to good judgment and good awareness, because sometimes we're afraid of the consequences it will come back onto ourselves. We must make it through the courage barrier and then we can decide, we can behave, we can reallocate our resources to the future that we wanna live in. The motivation and the action are not the strong points of life cycle assessment. Life cycle assessment works primarily in the cognitive domain. It may reveal motivations to people. It may help people who have an inclination to be motivated. I don't know that it can create in people the courage to act. So understanding where our skills fit in to a model of moral development like this is important to understanding our strengths and our limitations, what we have to expect to lean on others to do to make a difference in the world. Systems thinking. The way that we've organized knowledge since the first university in Bologna is relying on Aristotle's metaphor of the tree. We create specialties and disciplines 
And each one of them is a branch off of some other limb or trunk of the tree of knowledge. A graduate student then, a PhD student in particular, is a leaf growing out of some super specialized twig on the tree of knowledge and they are expected to stay there and that is not the way knowledge is organized anymore. Because we're all connected by information communication technology, the World Wide Web is a powerful metaphor. Scholar.Google has reorganized the way we access the academic product and it is like a web. We have plenty of leaves in this world. When we, we work as life cycle analysts, we often wind up interacting with one twig on one branch of our client's organizational chain. We feel constrained by, well, this is what the business unit said they want, and so this is the analysis that I'm going to do. And yet, what the world needs more of are the spiders, the people who will connect the different branches of knowledge the people who can create knowledge through connections. This is the way the World Wide Web works. And I'm not saying that we're gonna throw away the tree of knowledge. What I'm saying is we are gonna be more creative, more innovative, and it's consistent with the idea of boundaries expansion to work more in this way of the web. It requires people to think different than the way they've been educated, trained, and organized to date. Communication. What we do is we gather data, you know, we all want more of it. I may be an exception. I don't want more, I'm inundated right now with data. You have to improve the data to the point where it becomes information. But information is not knowledge. Knowledge is putting that information into practice. Knowledge is know-how. Information is a better description of the world and what to expect from it, but that doesn't always tell you what to do with the information, and knowledge is not wisdom. I feel data overloaded and wisdom impoverished. What I want is more wisdom. Wisdom is about knowing not how to do it, but what is the thing to do. I'm gonna paraphrase Drucker, who said there's nothing worse than a really efficient process for doing the wrong thing. Wisdom is about what's the right thing to do. Knowledge and efficiency is about how to do it better. Life cycle assessment is working down at the bottom in the data and information levels and a little bit on the knowledge. At the bottom, we have science. The difficulty is at the top where society needs more wisdom. That's not the domain of the scientist. It's the domain of the humanist. It's where we tell stories. Science fiction is this oxymoronic blend of science at the bottom and fiction up at the top. If science is about what is true and fiction is about what is imagined, then how can we even have science fiction and why would we bother? It's because science fiction is where we get to explore our moral imagination. It's where we get to create worlds that don't exist and say, I want that. If you're my age, then you wasted several hours of your life after school trying to get your little sister to hold the antenna just right so you could watch the original Gene Roddenberry Star Trek reruns. And they whipped out the communicator and they said, beam me up, Scotty. And some engineer at Motorola said, I want that. He didn't necessarily think about what would be all the implications that come from creating one of these. Instead, he said, now that I can imagine it, I can use my understanding of physics and electronics to create it. It has changed the world that we live in. We must partner with people who are more expert than us at the fiction to be able to navigate this full range of communication. And not everybody to whom we're communicating is looking for more data or more information. 